Hey family, it's T. Now, I've been back on my truck for a minute and I've been cooking, but I've been filming and I had to try to, um, you know, clean up some of the videos I have from that North Carolina kitchen takeover. Well, a whole lot of editing going on. Well, this is one of those dishes that I made when I got back on the truck and it had a whole lot of editing going on too. So, if it's a little dark, yeah, I made it at night and trying to edit it here in the daytime. So, let me show you what I did. Let's go! Hi, my name is T. I am not a chef. Actually, I'm a truck driver. Uh -huh. And I don't drive food trucks. I drive a semi. What I'm about to do is show you how to do what I do on my truck. Welcome to your favorite new food show, Big Taste in a Small Space with me, T. Well now with all the heavy editing, I've been also playing with camera speeds and techniques, so let's hope this works out. If not, well I got some other stuff going on. So I had some clams. I had planned on making a different dish when I even started this, but then I was checking my clams and it seemed like some of them was dying off. And you know I hate wasting food. I think that's one of the true sins in life is to waste food. So I said let me get all my clams that I can and uh, eat them before they all go bad. And if you see your clams are open like that and like that and you know they just won't respond they dead people they dead you don't want to eat them mm-hmm so i picked out all the clams because i had a bunch of them and i figured let me get rid of the bad ones let me work with the good ones trust me they even taste bad if you eat a dead clam happily i haven't gotten sick so far from eating a dead guy but you know you don't want to do it it's gonna mess mess up the whole flavor profile of your meal so you know you put your clams in water and i like to rub them rub 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 rub, rub, rub the outside shell it's gonna help get all the sand and the dirt and the stuff off the outside of your clams and also kind of wake them up so you can tell who's alive and who's not and because I had some dead ones and that dead water going to taste like dead water and going to get in your live clams, I kind of poured that water off and I poured some fresh water on there and, you know, did the same thing. Let them sit, let them soak, rub them down a little bit. And when you let them sit there, the live ones will spit all that extra sand that's in them out of them, which is a wonderful thing because... Yeah, it's going to spit that nasty juice out too. So while that's soaking, I got my little rice cooker out and I made a little black rice. But I did a little something that this is kind of experiment to. Well, first, you know, you got to wash your rice because that black rice has got a whole lot of starch. That's why they call it either sticky rice or forbidden rice. Same thing. But it's got so much starch that you want to wash some of it off. So I usually wash mine eh, two or three times. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm using my fingers to stir it up. And yeah, it's a great cooking tool. So anyway, you see all that purple in the bag? That's the starch coming off the rice. And I like to have my water lukewarm because it will be even more dark purple. This water was kind of cold. Mm -hmm. But you rinse your rice, you pour it off. Rinse it a third time. Three times is nice because it'll be even less sticky when you cook it. Yeah, yeah. So, you rinse your rice. You pour your, your, your sticky purple water off. And, yeah, set that aside. So now, we're going to do something different. It's kind of a test. I'm going to put some saffron in the rice. Now, if you use saffron in white rice or even brown rice, it's going to turn your rice kind of golden. But a little saffron, a little salt, little black pepper, kind of seasoning up the rice. 
I want to see if I can get that saffron the way I want it. Little garlic powder. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of ginger. Fresh piece of ginger, grated finely. I did about, I don't know, quarter inch of ginger. Next time, maybe I'll use more ginger, more saffron. Like I said, I'm working with it. I'm working. I ain't a sh I'm not a chef. So this is an experiment in the making. You know, put your water in, two cups of rice, two cups of water. Stir it up, close it up, start it up, set it for brown rice, let it go. Then I wanted to do some stuff. So I got some celery. Take the heads off. Instead of taking one big piece of celery and mince it all up at one time, I took the whole stalk. I cut some down. We're going to use it just like that. Get my little mini food processor. I haven't used that in a while. I'm trying to get back into some of my toys. And just those little bits of celery, the heads, the leaves. Leaves give you a lot of nice flavor. You mince that down with the food processor. Saves time. This video took a long enough time. Saves time. And the remember now. Yeah, you want all that goodness out of there. And you put that aside. Now, I'm not even cleaning out my food processor just yet. Because I'm going to do something else. I got me a little piece of uh, onion. Mm, chop that down a little bit. Just a little piece. And put that into the food processor. Mm, put the rest of the onion away. Uh, took some more ginger. Yeah, sometimes I peel it. Sometimes I don't. That peel, that skin is so paper thin about a half an inch of ginger chop that down a little bit put that in the food processor i got a little bit of a couple of pieces of garlic four five seven cloves of garlic ain't that the way you count and i blitz that up in my food processor too mm-hmm yep you know get it down off the walls blitz it a little more there you go. Kind of rough chopped. And you put that on the plate with your with your celery. Mm-hmm. Because, yep, that's wonderful flavor, flavor, flavor. Flavor, flavor. Oh, sorry, no clocks involved. But get that on your plate. Put that aside. Now I'm going to kind of rinse out my little food processor real quick. A little water. Shake it up, blitz it up. That's just a real quick, rough clean so I can clean it easier later. Because if you don't, stuff's going to be stuck to the sidewalls. You ain't going to like that. Anyway, put that aside for now. And you get out some carrot. Just one particular carrot. Yeah, skin the outside of the carrot. Clean it up some. And clean up your fake cutting board. I do have a cutting board, but I like using the plates. It just clean up is easier. And we're just going to take little shreds of this carrot with the same peeler. Yep, we're going to shave down some carrot. That's why we only need one, because one's going to give us enough. You put that aside. Now, what we're going to do next, we're going to get some shrooms. These are those little weird mushrooms. I got to go back and find out what the name of them are. You can look on the internet. But they're beautiful. They're beautiful. And one piece of shroom might be enough. I don't mean one piece, but you know, one little head. And you peel it and you put it aside. And you also have a king trumpet mushroom. Now that I know the name of. Mm -hmm. They're these big, big things. Look. Ooh, look, mmm, anyway, ain't gonna talk about what they look like, but they look like it. And you cut them up into half and cut them, the halves down some, and yeah. Get nice little chunks of King Trumpet Mushroom. Put that aside. Everything's going aside, sure is. Now, some bok choy. Now, some of this stuff I'm using because I don't want it to go bad, because you have these fresh vegetables and meats around too long. You saw me throw away some clams. So I'm just trying to clean up my kitchen. I cleaned up myself after my fast. So 
you know, you just want to make sure you use this stuff at the peak of their freshness and before you have to throw all your money in the garbage. So take the bok choy, take the leaves off, make sure you clean it. Because if you look at the bottom, you'll find some dirt in the bigger pieces and you don't want that grit. If you don't want the grit from the clams, why would you want the grit from the bok choy? I'm just saying. So clean that up, put it aside. What else we got? We have got some eggplant. I like these little cutie cutie little baby eggplants. Take the top off. Cut them in half, cut the half in half, and you cut those in maybe three, four pieces, depending on how big they are. Yep. So you're going to break down your eggplant a little bit. Cut them, cut them. Okay. So then you get your eggplant placed on your plate. And a trick that I've learned, because some people say, oh, eggplant's so bitter. So you use a little salt, whatever kind. This is that cherry wood smoked salt. You salt your eggplant, and you let it sit on the side for about, I don't know, a few minutes, half hour. You mix it all in before you sit aside. You know, you want the salt on all the pizza of the eggplant. It's going to draw out the bitterness. It's going to draw out some liquid. It's going to be cool. Now... These clams, I also put some uh, oysters in this water too. So I got some clams and I got some oysters soaking, trying to get, you know, clean. And we gonna shuck them. Cause I'm a bad mother shucker boy, I tell you what. Mm, it's not always easy, sometimes it is. There's a little soft spot on a particular side, you get your knife worked in. Only use a clam knife please people and find a nice one with a round edge. I used a real knife one time. Boy, I cut myself something terrible. A whole lot of drinking going on that day. But anyway, so you shuck, you shuck, you shuck a shuck a shuck. Shuck a clam, shuck a clam, shuck a shuck a shuck a shuck a shuck a clam. Yeah, you get your clam shucked up real good. And, you know, clean them up, put them on the side. And they're in the mouth. Yeah, that's about it. So once your clams all shucked up nicely, you put them aside for a second, and they're, uh, you get your uh, oven pan out. Put a little aluminum foil on them, because we're going to put the uh, your oysters in the oven. Yeah, we're going to roast the oysters. We're going to eat the clams raw. Also because I got tired of Shucking clams. I don't feel like shucking those shucking oysters. So You put your oysters on your baking pan Preheat your oven to about 400 Put your oysters in the oven. It's gonna take about 15 minutes or so. They're gonna pop open Yes, they will And while that's happening you run your knife under the bottom of the clams just to make sure they loose from the shell. You don't want to have to fight your clams after you done fought your clams again, you know. So you're just going to get them off the bottom clam, make them easier to eat. Yes, indeed. So now, after all that fighting's done, you're going to make a little sauce for your clams. Half a teaspoon of chili garlic sauce, quarter teaspoon of this crispy chili, Crispy chili is kind of salty. You don't need a whole lot. And a half a lemon. Mm-hmm. Half a lemon. Squeeze in the dish. Make sure you don't get them seeds in there. Mix it up. Mixy, 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 mixy. Here you go. Sit that aside. By now, your oysters should have opened up. Let's see your oysters. There you go. And they open up. Take them off the cooking sheet. Sometimes I save that liquid for another dish, but not this time. And if they're open, they're edible. If they're not, toss them. So now let's cook some else, them vegetables. My little new wok, new frying pan. Put a little, uh, little uh, oil in there. That was sesame oil. Put mushrooms in first. Get some color on mushrooms. Put a little garlic oil on top of mushrooms in the pan. 
I'm gonna have a nice little scissor going. That, that's gonna be on kind of a medium high. A high high. Not blazing high, but you know, high. Add a little uh, chili oil to that. Mm-hmm. And you stir it up a little bit. Gotta make sure that flavor gets spursed around. Spur, spur, yeah, yeah, all over the place. So yeah, and then I'm gonna add. Uh, I'm gonna add my my. I'm gonna add my eggplant to that. Yes, I am. Put your eggplant in there. You're gonna stir that up some more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, well, there's the eggplant. I'm a little ahead of myself. What can I say? Ah, <sighs> stir that up real good. You frying it up. Like I said, the heat's kind of high, so this, go this part will try to go fast. Once you do all that hard prepping, because this is a lot of extra prepping in the beginning, you put your your celery, onion. And all the stuff you put in the food process. You put it in the pot. Ah, put your bok choy in the pot. Man, I'll be glad when I get all these videos I got in the back in the can out. So I can do it the way I normally do it. But that's all right. You put your rest of your little vegetables. Put your, your carrot in there. Add a drizzle of the ginger. Not the ginger, but the vinegar that comes with the ginger yeah that's gonna give you a lovely taste because it's kind of sweet kind of gingery kinda, mm. and then you start plating this up because you thought it took a while to do the video Whew, it was a minute to make it but some days i got time like today i think i got some time i got something in mind but you plate up your rice you plate up your vegetables mm-hmm you add just a drizzle of that superior soy sauce on top of your vegetables. And bam! There is a lovely dinner that you saved without throwing away all your food. Some oysters, some clams, some forbidden rice, and some mixed vegetables. If it wasn't for the clams and the oysters, this could be... Uh, uh, that could be vegan. But hey, we going vegetarian today. We gonna eat some pescatarian. <laughs>